gotta have the stickers to prove your worth oh there's one more right here all right today should be fun can this m4 max macbook pro beat one of the most expensive gaming laptops this is the razer blade 18 can it beat it in capabilities uh, software development tests and of course local llm workflows this one has the m4 max chip but this one has an rtx 4090 and a 24 core processor now there's one thing I gotta do right away and this is to run the CPU benchmark. I don't wanna get it too much into benchmarks here, but I wanna do this to get a baseline of how the Intel machine Yes, this is a 14th generation Core i9. How it behaves on battery and off battery because that will affect the rest of our tests. For those of you that don't know, the MacBook runs exactly the same whether it's plugged in or not. And I am running it on high power mode. A few moments later. Now, I'm not even kidding you. This machine with the more cores got a pretty bad score. And this is if you run it on battery out of the box. And out of the box, it comes with its power mode set to balanced. So that's what you're dealing with. If you're gonna be working on this machine out of the box on balanced mode, you know, it's a laptop. So you're gonna wanna take it places. You're not always gonna be plugged in, but your performance is gonna struggle quite a lot. Let's set it to best performance, plug it in, and we'll see if that improves things a bit. As Soon as I did that, at least it improved the fan noise. I mean, increased it. Listen to that. Why? Okay. Let's do it again. Run CPU benchmark. Go. All right, it's done. It's not terrible scores, but it's not what you would expect from a machine that cost over $4,000. Remember, these are the scores we got from the MacBook. And these are the improved scores with performance set to best performance and plugged in better, but not even close. Now, since a lot of you watching this channel are developers and I do web development myself, this is a pretty relevant test and it's called Speedometer 3.0. I've got some more developer tests coming up in the video, but this one is a nice easy way that you don't have to install anything. You just run this in the browser. What's going on? This is really sad. We've got 49.8 on the Mac and 23. Let's just keep going, okay? This is web tooling benchmark for V8. This is a CLI and also web-based tool that is designed to measure JavaScript performance. Workloads uh, for tools like Babel, TypeScript, and the goal is to only measure JavaScript and not IO performance here. You can go to the GitHub repo and download it yourself and run it as well. That's kind of what it looks like. All right, I've cloned the repository. I installed the NPM packages, and now we're gonna run this. So let's go. Acorn, 44.1 uh, runs per second on the Mac, 34 on the Windows machine. Babel, 36 on the Mac, 23 on the Windows machine. And this one's almost done. There's that fan again. Prepack, 36 on the Mac, 24 on the Windows machine. TypeScript, 44 on the Mac, 32 on the Windows machine. And finally, we get the geometric mean, 36.31 runs per second on the Mac, 25.4 runs per second on the Windows machine. The Razer does not uh, vindicate itself. Okay, let's keep going. It's gotta be good at something, right? Let's check disk speed. This test checks both sequential reads and writes. So if you're copying a large file from one place to another, sequential measures that. But if you're copying lots of small files, or if you're doing like a code compilation, for example, then you want to look at something called random, random reads and writes. So we'll see that here as well. It's running right now. We've got one number so far for reads and it's already looking better on the Mac. As a side note, I'm starting to get the feeling that you might suspect to foul play here, but I assure you, I was not paid by these companies. I did buy the MacBook by myself uh, with my own money and I bought the Razer with my own money as well, which was a really dumb move, uh, apparently, at least from the performance I've seen so far. While the disk speed test is running, it does have a couple of benefits. It has a built-in ethernet port, it has USB-A ports, it has HDMI just like the Mac, it also has an SD card reader just like the Mac. Now the Mac has three Thunderbolt 5 ports. This one has one Thunderbolt 5 ports, however, that Thunderbolt 5 port is capable capable of going to a dock and going out to three displays. Whereas, as we found out in my other video on displays and MacBooks, Apple machines cannot do that. They can only go out to a dock from one port 
to two displays. Jumping in here real quick, I wanna say thank you to the members of the channel. This is an independent review. None of these machines were purchased by companies. I bought them myself. So thanks to the members to make that possible. If you wanna join the channel, there's a join button right down below. Back to the video. We have our results for the disk speed test. Finally, <laughs> the Razer actually gets some higher scores here. Not the sequential. This, for the sequential test, the Mac destroys it. Look at those read and write speeds for sequential on the Mac. It's insane. And here it is for the Razer. At least the write speed is much faster on the Razer's internal disk than it is on the Macs. But since I mentioned Thunderbolt 5 and I opened the door to that, let's test out this Thunderbolt 5 external drive and see what the disk speed tests are for this. I only have one of these, so I have to do it one at a time. Running the MacBook. These numbers are crazy. This is insane speeds for Thunderbolt 5. Wow. Okay, so apparently this one doesn't work on Windows. This is formatted as APFS and I cannot reformat it as anything else. Good thing to know about this little device. Here are the results for the Mac. And this is using the OWC external drive, which was formatted as APFS. Now I'm gonna use a drive that's formatted as XFAT. Let's see if that makes a difference. So here's the external drive I'm using. Ah, it's hot. <laughs> There is a drive inside there. It's a Samsung 990 Pro. This is a dock slash Thunderbolt 5 external NVMe enclosure. While wow, the disk speed test is running and this is at 46 degrees, that is pretty high, uncomfortable. And we're finally done, but wow. Okay, I take back what I said about the Razer implementing Thunderbolt. Well, uh, it might work with monitors, but not so much with external hard drives. So the sequential read speed is pretty good. I can't complain about that because that's higher than uh, Thunderbolt 4 ever was. But look at the other numbers. The random read and write speeds, pretty terrible. What this means is copying any data to an external drive is gonna be pretty slow. And if you're using your external drive to do any kind of code compilations, storing your code on the external drive, some people do that, it's also not going to be great. Moving on to some compiled projects. I keep a repository of my tests that I do on these machines for this channel. And uh, I've recently created a new one, uh, a large .NET project. So it's a compilation project. But how do you make a really large compilation project in .NET? Well, you kind of have to fake it by generating a lot of classes and namespaces. And there is a Python program that's going to generate what is that? 100,000 namespaces and classes. And then compile them. And I call this aptly large project. We're on .NET 9 on both of these. So let's do time, run benchmark. And I wrote a shell script for the Mac version and a PowerShell script for the Windows version. Now on Windows, we don't do time command. We do measure command. Now it's going through and generating all the files. And then it builds the project and we'll see how long that takes. Oh my gosh, okay, the noise is back. So we've got, um, for the time command on the Mac, one minute, 53 seconds, and two minutes, 52 seconds, a whole minute slower on the Windows machine. And this is .NET. Now that does include a lot of file operations because we're generating that code, then we're building it, which simulates a pretty large project. But what about the native environment for .NET developers? Visual Studio, right? I've got Visual Studio installed on this. Now on this, there's no such thing as Visual Studio for Mac anymore. But when I'm working on a Mac and I need Visual Studio, I use Parallels for that. Uh, I've made many videos about that here as well, not sponsored. So let's pop that open. Okay, I've got Windows on there now and it just started up, it's very fast. Now I'm gonna start up Visual Studio on both of these. So let's go. Visual Studio, oh, started up here first. Let's create a brand new project. I'm gonna click on Create Project on both of them. And this is gonna be a Blazor app. It's fine, next. And let's click Create, boom. Which one of these is gonna create the project first? This one's done. There's the editor. You can edit the code now and run it. This one is now is done. Folks, we're talking about a virtual machine running Visual Studio faster than this brand new Intel Core i9 machine. Okay, let's run this Hello World project too. And go. For those of you that are not familiar with Blazor, it's a web technology. Build web apps with it. And this one's done. It's running the web app. What is this one doing? What are you doing? It's doing something, right? I mean, yeah, it's building it, okay? It's still doing it. There we go. Wow, this is insane. 
I don't know if my unit is just bad because how can Razer charge this much money? I don't know. So that was a .NET compilation. Let's do some interpreted code, which is uh, Python is a good example of that. And I have a program called Mandelbrot. It's the Mandelbrot algorithm. Mandelbrot was a mathematician that created all these fractal patterns. And this program is used to simulate that. Got Python version 3.12 on both of these machines. Let's go Python main, and we need to give it a parameter. I'm gonna give it 16,000. This comes from Benchmarks Game, which is a website that has a lot of language tests programming languages, and it pins a bunch of languages against each other in different algorithms. And their documentation for this particular test says that you need to use 16,000 as the parameter, and that's what I've been using. So again, we're gonna use measure command here on the PC. Now, what's special about this test is that it utilizes all the cores. You know what that means? This machine with more cores should just win by default. It did have a lower single core score, so we don't know what's gonna happen in the end, but it already has a big advantage by having more cores. Ready, set, and go. All right, there they go. You can hear that fan spinning up quite a bit. Not too bad, we're at 40 degrees, but that's because the test ended so soon. What do we got here? We got 16 seconds on the M4 Max and 21 seconds on the Windows machine. Still the Mac beats it out. I don't know, I don't know, but <laughs> You know, with that 4090 in there, it's gotta do really well with machine learning. So let's switch over to that. We'll kick things off with a simple tool called Olama, which is really easy to run and get going with. And then we'll add another tool as well. Let's make sure it's running. Olama run Llama 3.2, and we'll do verbose here so that we can get the number of tokens. Olama run Llama 3.2 dash dash verbose. Now this Mac has 128 gigs of RAM. This Windows machine only has 32, so I'm not gonna run large models because they simply won't fit, especially because the NVIDIA 4090 in here only has 16. So we're limited to small models like the three billion parameter model. This one is ready to go. I'm still waiting for you to uh, get your act together. What's going on here? Let's take a look at this. Uh, task manager here and we've got the GPU, which is the internal, and then we've got the second GPU, which is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. Now, this 4090 is the mobile version, and I know some of you are gonna point that out. Mobile versions are very different than desktop versions. Yet in my previous tests with a 3070, and I've done 4090 tests as well on this channel before against the previous models of the MacBooks, they did really well. I was using slightly different tools and techniques. Now we have things like Olama and LM Studio, which makes things a lot easier easier to run these models. But back when I did that with PyTorch directly, for example, the 4090 killed. Finally, it loaded up. Let's do um, write a story. And let's do the same thing here. Write a story. And boom. Okay, okay, they both look pretty fast. Huh. Here we go. Finally, something this machine is good at. 147 tokens per second with Olama. It's not bad, 110 tokens per second. Still pretty good. Finally, some redemption for this machine. And uh, you can see that that did run on the GPU. You can see a spike right over there on the RTX 4090. That was the span of where that model ran. You can also see that this model has taken up 3.6 gigabytes out of the 16 dedicated GPU memory that's available. We also have a tool called LM Studio, which makes it very convenient to run these LLMs as well. And you have a little bit more control here of how you prepare it. For example, I can go into developer here and go to LN runtimes and I can select different runtimes. For example, the GGUF type of models run on metal, but also Apple Silicon can run MLX models. MLX is a framework that's designed for Apple chips specifically to be faster and be more performant. Whereas here we have CUDA which means this running on the NVIDIA GPU. But you can also select CPU, Llama CPP, or Vulkan, which is gonna run on the integrated GPU. But we want the fastest possible performance, so we're gonna use CUDA here. Let's make sure that we're using the same kind of models on both of these, so it's fair. Here is an example right here. Llama 3.2, 3 billion instruct, same quantization, Q4 underscore K underscore M, and it's a GGUF variety. They're exactly the same model, so let's run that one. And I'm gonna offload everything possible to the GPU on both of these machines. Let's load that model. Why does it load instantly on the Mac, but it takes forever to load here on the, still not, not even loaded. 
Ah, I just find anything to complain about, don't I? So what's happening right now is this model, it's being loaded into memory. You can see that GPU spiking right there. And I can tell you what my theory is. This is the difference between having unified memory versus memory that's for your system on the Windows machine versus memory that's for your GPU which is called VRAM. So here, the model is instantly loaded and is instantly available because that memory is shared. So it's already available to the GPU. Whereas here, it's gonna have to copy that model first from the system memory to the GPU memory before it's available and can run it. And that takes an initial hit. But once you're there, it should be fast. Write a story, write a story. And boom. <laughs> I don't know, this is, this is a close one. They're both going really, really fast. Okay. That one's not done yet. <gasps> what? Okay, uh, wow. First of all, the Mac was faster to first token. We're at 0 0.10 seconds to first token, whereas this one was 0.25 to first token. That's fine. But where I'm really surprised is the tokens per second here. For this particular model, we're 121 tokens per second on the Mac and 89 tokens per second on the PC. Were we using the GPU? Let's let's do that again. Right story. And I want to make sure that this is in fact using the GPU. Yes, it's fully using, well, I don't know about fully, but it is using the GPU. Sometimes jumping to 100%, but there's this weird spiking going on. I don't know if it's the implementation the way LM Studio interacts with CUDA or what? Not ideal. 94 tokens per second, so better, but nowhere close to 121. Let's run this one again, just to be fair. Maybe it's gonna come down a little bit. 104, it came down a little bit. So, wow, it's still beating the NVIDIA RTX 4090 mobile. Let's also try that MLX version here. I have that here as well, which is also Llama 3.23 billion, but it's designed to run on Apple Silicon specifically. Let's do write a story. 172 tokens per second. Wow. <laughs> that is a big difference. Holy cow. All right. Okay. Maybe it's not a fair test. Maybe I just didn't know what I was getting into. You know what? This MacBook is obviously way too powerful. Um, let's try something less powerful. Ah, this one. It's a 14 inch M4 Pro MacBook Pro. So M4 Pro has uh, about half the amount of memory bandwidth than the M4 Max. So here I've got the MLX Community Llama 3.23. Everything looks pretty much the same. Let's run it here, write a story, boom. It's going pretty fast, pretty fast, but is it gonna beat 94 tokens per second of this uh, Razer? 103 tokens per second? Even the M4 Pro beat it? Come on. This was the MLX version, of course. So yeah, even this one beats out the Razer. Now you heard me mention memory bandwidth, and that's a very important thing when it comes to machine learning. If you're interested in learning more about that, I got a video specifically about that right over here. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully all you Razer fans are not offended. I'll see you in the next video.